something quite amazing has happened, which is that Mitch McConnell had negotiated a deal with the Biden White House that he was convinced would satisfy enough House Republicans who were opposed to Ukraine uh, funding that the deal that they got to increase border security was so good that it was worth giving $60 billion to Ukraine. The problem for Mitch McConnell is that Donald Trump took one look at this bill and said, this bill is a joke. It provides symbolic improvements in border security at most, but it does absolutely nothing to really cure the fundamental problems. And when Trump came out and opposed the bill, now that Trump is essentially the acclimated leader of the Republican Party on his way to becoming the nominee, it made the bill dead on arrival in the House. No House Republicans, very few, were willing to vote for a border security bill that Donald Trump is mocking as woefully inadequate and insufficient. And as a result, it now seems, and I don't want to be too optimistic about it because like I said, I won't believe that the war machine loses until I see them lose, but it now seems very possible that they will actually suffer a defeat. And I wanted to show you some amazing aspects and kind of the official narrative about what is happening here to give you a sense for how deeply corrupted Washington is in a way that often cannot be described. So here's the New York Times account of all of this. The New York Times, of course, is as vehement of a supporter of sending tens of billions of dollars more to Ukraine, even as they warn Americans to face and prepare themselves for necessary cuts in their retirement benefits and Social Security and Medicare. And of course, they're blaming Donald Trump for all of this. There you see the headline, Trump strengthens grip on Capitol Hill as he presses toward nomination. The former president's opposition has all but killed the prospects for a bipartisan border deal, reflecting how his influence in Congress has grown as he gains ground in the Republican primary. Quote, for months, Senate Republicans have been working with Democrats on a deal they have described as a once-in-a-generation opportunity for a conservative border security bill. And for weeks, they have hinted they are tantalizingly close to an agreement. But their timing could not be worse as former President Donald J. Trump moves closer to becoming his party's presidential nominee and Republican lawmakers consolidate behind him. He is wielding a heavier hand than any time since leaving office over his party's agenda in Congress. His vocal opposition to the emerging border compromise has all but killed the measure's chances in a divided Congress as he puts his own hardline immigration policies once again at the center of his presidential campaign. His, quote, America first approach to foreign policy already helped to sap Republican support for sending aid to Ukraine for its war against Russian aggression, placing the fate of that money in doubt. That led Republicans to demand a border crackdown in exchange for any further funding for Kiev, a compromise that Mr. Trump has now repudiated. Now you see here the Republicans in the Senate who hate Trump so much, like Mitch McConnell and Mitt Romney, Susan Collins, who today said she will not support Donald Trump even if he's the nominee. What they're trying to do is to say that Trump is opposed to this border security deal even though it's so great, so conservative, because he wants to run on a platform of accusing Biden of leaving the border open and he's sacrificing the interest of the country for his own political gain. The argument of Donald Trump and his allies, however, is that the border security is a bill is a joke. That Mitch McConnell and Mitt, Mitt Romney and Susan Collins and all of these senators who negotiated this and are trying to present it as some grave conservative win never cared and still do not care about border security. In fact, the Republican Party of George Bush and Dick Cheney and Mitt Romney and John McCain has always been one that wants greater amounts of immigration because they're serving their corporate donor base and large corporations want an influx of immigrants because it drives down wages. That's the reason until it was declared racist to do so, much of the left and labor unions always opposed greater amounts of immigration. When I started writing about politics, greater amounts of immigration was a conservative Republican view. It was what the Chamber of Commerce wanted. It was what Dick Cheney wanted. And people like Bernie Sanders and labor unions were opposed to it on the grounds that it would cost American jobs and undermine American wages. And that's why corporatists who don't care about nationalism or any of these other issues like Mitch McConnell, 
don't give the slightest concern for border security. And they negotiated a deal that Trump took one look at and said, this is not a real border security bill, but a joke. Now, Mitch McConnell's priority is very explicit and very clear because he's admitted what it is. And this is the part of the story I find most amazing. Listen to this. On Wednesday, Senator Mitch McConnell of Kentucky, the min minority leader and a champion of the emerging bipartisan deal, acknowledged as much. He told Republicans privately that Mr. Trump's growing influence has complicated the politics of the border, dividing Republicans against one another on an issue that once united the party. Republicans are, quote, in a quandary, Mr. McConnell said in a closed door meeting on Wednesday, according to lawmakers who attended what was supposed to be the sweetener for conservatives opposed to sending tens of billions of dollars to Ukraine had become just as politically treacherous terrain as the foreign aid itself. Mr. McConnell himself regards the border deal as less important than sending military aid to Ukraine. I just want to emphasize this. I find this miraculous that he would say this. Mitch McConnell, who has basically run the Republican Party in the Senate for decades now, admits explicitly that he regards a deal to make the border more secure to be less important, less important than sending military aid to Ukraine. So he represents a political party, Mitch McConnell does, that has made itself abundantly clear that they don't care about sending more uh, aid to Ukraine. What they care about is protecting their communities from more and more migrants that they can't afford to accommodate or assimilate. Even blue state mayors and governors, now overrun by large numbers of immigrants, are saying, we also can't accommodate these any longer. And yet Mitch McConnell is saying, I don't really care about the priorities of the Republican Party voting base. I don't care about border issues. What I care about is making sure that we continue to fund the war in Ukraine. That is my top priority. This is why the Republican Party and the Democratic Party are so united and so pathological in the same way. This is why, no matter what you tell Republican voters about Donald Trump or even a lot of independents, He's a fascist, he's a racist, he's a criminal, he's an insurrectionist, he's a dictator, whatever you want to call him. They understand that the people who are running Washington and who hate Donald Trump absolutely do not have their interest in mind. In what conceivable way is it more beneficial to the American people to send $60 billion more to continue this fruitless war in Ukraine than it is to close up the border? The left liberal African-American political commentator Charlemagne was recently speaking on, I believe, CNN or on his own show. And he was saying that the people with whom he's speaking, ordinary voters, black voters, are more concerned than ever about this immigration issue. The New York Times columnist who now just spits out left-wing Democratic Party dogma, Jamel Bowie, wrote an article a decade ago in the American Prospect, a left liberal journal, where he warned Democrats, you better not be too permissive about opening the border because African-American voters on whom you rely are the ones most skeptical of opening the border because they're the ones who end up paying first with their jobs. They're the ones who know that the people who are going to take their jobs are newly arrived immigrants and who will drive down wages. And so what you're seeing now are ordinary people, not just Republicans, but polls show now all kinds of people who are starting to perceive that the enormous flow of migrants into the country is a threat to their well-being. And here you have Mitch McConnell and Joe Biden saying, we are willing to sacrifice that in order to spend another $60 billion in Ukraine. And then at the same time, you have Joe Biden who ran on a campaign of accusing Trump of being a white nationalist because of his pledges to close the border, now being willing to tell his own supporters, these immigration activists, Latino groups, I know I promised you that I would fight against tighter border controls, but given how important sending more money to Ukraine is, I'm willing to tell you that I'm now going to implement the policies that I spent years condemning as racist when Trump was advocating them. Do you see what Washington's priority is? 
it is to feed the endless war machine, to take American taxpayer dollars and pour them into the coffers of the arms industry that funds their campaigns, to keep the war in Ukraine going for as long as possible while Americans continue to suffer at home. Thanks for watching this clip from System Update, our live show that airs every Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern, exclusively on Rumble. You can catch the full nightly shows live or view the backlog of episodes for free on our Rumble page. You can also find full episodes the morning after they air across all major podcasting platforms, including Spotify and Apple. All the information you need is linked below. We hope to see you there.